Hey, welcome to another edition of Kyle Meredith with it's the interview series presented by WFPK at WFPK.org. Consequence and the Consequence Podcast Network. Thanks as always for making your way here, checking out the series. Of course, you know what to do. If you uh, like what you see, what you hear, hit that subscribe button. I put out three new interviews every single week. So it's a great way to keep up with all of your favorite artists. And I'm so excited once again, Gracie Abrams is back. Hello. Hey, how's it going? I'm great. Uh, so it's been a couple of years since we've talked and let me say things have happened for you things have happened for everyone how are you how have you been <laughs> no I'm doing okay I'm doing okay this is this is what I do every day but uh but let me say the last time we talked you were sort of building up to what would eventually be an album mm -hmm. and it happened and good riddance came out and it's such a beautiful record and so powerful and now you're Grammy nominated. And I just wanted to start with a huge congratulations to you for all of this. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you. That's really generous. And I'm just happy to be back here. Thank you. <laughs> so what's that? Um, you know, I, I know this is the question, but you get Grammy nominated, your best new artist. How does that work for you? How do, what, what are you doing at the time? I was, well, every year I feel like since they've done it, I've watched the well, every year growing up, I would watch the Grammys, like from the couch or from bed or whatever it is, like just a huge fan and love cheering from the couch. Um, and I was in bed with like my heating pad on and watching the live stream, like expecting truly like nothing at all. And um, it was pure shock and like terror. <laughs> like I like... Because the, they announced the category and and they said my like my name came up for, like there wasn't even like a second to process the fact that that had um, happened. So I called my mom and, you know, gasped for air on the phone for a while. And then Noah Khan was the first person to, to call me and we kind of just had like a screaming match on the phone. Because he's also nominated for the same category, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. I'm like, just he is, he is the greatest guy. Like I wish everyone knew him personally he's such a he's such a good person yeah which you know of course i'll also point out you guys have uh, uh recorded together on noah's song uh with the everywhere everything and it's yeah. great to hear you guys i mean you sound great together thank you he's i mean like he is just i feel like he could carry anyone and anything on his back you know what i mean he's just so good so i am very grateful that he asked me to hop on that one. Yeah. So is there at least some like uh friendly ribbing that goes on at all with the two of you? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> or like I will destroy you kind of No, I literally like I I I can't even I I don't I have taken myself out of the equation entirely. You know what I mean? I'm literally just like so excited to cheer and scream in like a really obnoxious way for everyone that wins. And everyone that doesn't and everyone who's not been nominated like there's so many incredible artists this year that like should have been in the, you know I just am so anyway um it's such a it's such an honor and also it's like you look around and so many of my favorite artists have never been nominated for any so it's grain of salt huge fat grain of salt huge honor can't wait to like see everyone look hot the weird balance of of whatever this game is that everybody plays right that's <laughs> You're like ah! <laughs> just like holy shit <laughs> Yeah. Um, well, I do want to talk about the record a little bit because because it is it's an incredible piece of work that you've done here, and you know I've been hearing about what you've said about it over the past year. I mean, I'm looking at quotes right now. Writing this record allowed me to grow up in ways I needed to. You said it's the first time you felt 100 percent yourself. You know, I think I'm quoting things that you said a lot. Mm -hmm. But now that you know it has been out there, like these songs have been worked on for the past few years, and it was released at this point of the year. Now it's being celebrated. For this to be so personal, has it changed the way your relationship ha that you have with it or or how you see it or hear it? Yeah, well, I think like, uh, yes, in that I think like having had the opportunity to tour it all year long, it's like so many of my memories associated with these songs now are because of the shows that we've played and the people that have been generous enough to come to those shows. and um. So it's funny, the like lifespan of music, just like the way that it, it goes. It's like you spend all this time writing it in isolation and, and recording it and sitting on it kind of. And then it's everybody else's. Um, and that is kind of the best. 
thing. Uh, it's also like that that process, playing so many shows this year, getting a feel for that muscle, you know, with all of this music that was so introverted, ultimately, I think like it's taught me a lot about how I want to feel on stage what I want to be playing and like the kinds of songs I suppose because like you can play anything anywhere but I I do want to I how do I put it like the the process of playing live has influenced greatly the way that I record and and I write now um so uh, like this record, I, I Good Riddance means so much to me and all of the things that I've said about it, Archer, in terms of like how significant the process was in terms of like what it taught me about myself, how I love to write the collaborator that I was lucky enough to find through this whole process. Um, and now I feel like a slightly more extroverted person. So like the, uh, I guess Good Riddance now in, in the context of all the other music that I've been making since that record came out. Um, I have such a soft spot for it and uh, it really, it does mean so much to me and I am so psyched for next year. What's to come. I want to ask about that in a second, but, but just to go back on something you said there, because, because for what this record is, it represents, as you're saying, like, why, why, why did it become that moment in your life? Why does it have this complete representation of you in that moment in ways that the songs before didn't because like is it just a kind of like I was trying to figure out how to become a songwriter I mean what what sets it apart in that in that specific way um I think like I think that I well I I have been writing songs since I was eight years old like they a lot of I mean so many of them have just like I've been writing since I was really little and so like I, I don't think that it was like how to become a songwriter though like the more you write the better you get it's just like true um I think it was a lot to do with environment and like the period of my life that I was in like the teenager to like early 20s and like figuring out um I don't know I was like more deeply insecure than I feel today like I didn't like myself as much as I do now I didn't you know like I I was more malleable in ways that I don't think were helpful to my music often like I felt like I wanted to live up to some version that other people expected a little I I always felt like anytime I was doing anything that like could have been categorized as pop I guess it felt like a real stretch for me internally in a way that made it sometimes uncomfortable to then like come around to the to the point of releasing something like there was just kind of consistently one or two aspects of all of it that felt like it was like there was some internal like friction and when I started working on Good Riddance and when I met Aaron it was like this completely new lens through which I was like experiencing the process it was like uh, very far from LA first of all which I think was really helpful um, though like it might not sound like it matters ultimately but it really did for me um to be kind of in the middle of nowhere uh where there was real space and quiet to cultivate a world um and a dynamic a partnership between myself and Aaron like it was the first year of real intensive like going in for long periods of time and working together and getting to know each other like I think what I've learned even more recently uh, in terms of working on this next record is like the, the like dedication, like we, we can naturally have good chemistry and like click together writing songs and producing songs. But like if you're spending weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks on end doing it, even if like you spend one week and you get, you know, 10 songs and you can be, it's like the more that we've dedicated to ourselves to pushing this next record to like be the best version of it that is what I'm like learning to be so fucking excited by and like fulfilled by is like I think we're getting so much better at like working together and so I'm so grateful that Good Riddance exists because it does feel like kind of an 
feels like a true example of kind of just how we naturally are, how our brains are, but then to push ourselves in these new lanes has been really exciting and really, really fun, like pure fun. And like that, I didn't know I could feel when I'm writing about some hard feelings, you know, it's like to actually have the best time is so fucking lucky. Yeah. And I, I love Aaron. Um, love Aaron. <laughs> of course, been spending 20 years with the national, you know, in, in these moments right here and outside of shows and to see the work that he's not only done, but what you all have produced and, 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 and what you're saying is you, you all are continuing to work again, right? I mean, this, the, yeah. the new stuff. Yes. Yeah. 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 It's, he's so good. at sounds obviously, but he's so good at a mood. Oh my God. It's instant. And it's like, it, it's felt, I find like, it's so easy to identify work that he's touched. Cause it's like, often before any vocal whether it's like on the national or if it's you know and any of the uh, everything that Aaron has been a part of like it does just feel so evident to me and like I don't think that's just because I've spent you know days on end in his studio I literally think it's because you can feel energetically there's like a kind of heart in all of the music that he makes and um, a lot of it can feel really like, I find that what I love is that it can, like, make me feel sad, even if I'm not actually sometimes. And then the stuff that feels lighter, the stuff that lifts, like, has a sense of hope to it that is, like, just kind of rare, I think. He's amazing. Obviously. Yeah. Well, like I said, I, the work you guys do, and and it's very exciting, actually, to hear that there's going to be more. I've been also paying attention to some of these tracks in, you know, in the middle, too, uh, not just because the deluxe edition came out. Yeah. I mean, I've always been a fan of, I guess, what we used to call B-sides. Yeah, totally. You know, now it's deluxe edition stuff, like Unsteady, 405, Two People, which, I don't know, I've, I was thinking about Two People in, like, the grand statement, mm -hmm. the bigger picture of this album. Mm -hmm. Like, how do you how do you view that song? Because you know the fact that it just now comes at the end starts to say something for how I look at the full record, I guess, whether it's meant to or not. Totally. Well, it was funny. Like that song um, does feel kind of like a bit of the thesis, a a, a little. Um, I love that one, and it is. I think it like sounds cynical, but it actually. I was really happy to write it. Um, it's just like the truth. Everyone's changing all the time and nothing is guaranteed. And like, if something works, then great. And if it doesn't, of course it doesn't. I don't know. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I love this one. Yeah. Um, I was kind of surprised Abby wasn't part of the deluxe edition. No. I know, but Abby does have its own vinyl, so you can find it out yeah. there. <laughs> yeah, <it exists. laughs> um, and, and only while I'm here asking you about those, because uh, Cedar ended up on the Buccaneers soundtrack. Is that all from the same set? Is that from the old sessions or is that from new sessions? Cedar is from old sessions. Cedar was from like, um, Cedar was, was like a funny, Cedar was the demo title, obviously. And then by the time it got to where it did, we were like, let's just not change it to what we were. Anyway, um, it is, it is old. It's old. Yeah. 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 It, it definitely, like, it does feel like there is, like, a, now it's so funny because, because there was a, a, a few, or maybe it was, like, a month ago now or something, Um, one of my recent trips to Long Pond, there was a song that I wrote that instantly, after listening back to it once, I was like, oh, this, this would have been for good riddance. This is actually not this out. Like, it's been kind of easy for my brain to like categorize these songs into different worlds, which makes me excited because I think then the identity of this next album, like is just very different than Good Riddance ultimately. Though I do believe there's like a through line, but it do it does feel like uh, it's changed. Um, but Cedar, yeah, Cedar has like a quiet kind of, again, kind of like introverted heartbeat to it that um, is less present in the new stuff. So with whatever you feel like you could say, what defines the next set then against what we know from Good Riddance? I mean, 
I haven't quite even decided like how to talk about it yet because I haven't been talking about it yet. But but uh, I think um, it just it does feel more extroverted. It feel every song to me feels so sure of itself, and and I think like it's because I've had so much fun making it. Um, we've just had the best time. And so I think there's like something about all the music where I, I, ho I hope it feels like we had the best time making it uh, versus I feel like if you listen to Good Riddance, you're like, there's like, maybe she was crying between my takes, you know? <laughs> um, I don't feel like it sounds like I was crying on this next record. Yeah. That's great. I mean, the fun is good. I, I, and I've got no problem with the crying of Good Riddance because yeah. that moment is there as well, you know, when totally. we do that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And uh, and a quick, first I quickly mentioned, uh, you're going back out on tour with Taylor again. Those are more dates. That's, okay. I mean, is that a typical day for you uh, show-wise? And I'm only saying because that is such a heightened experience, I know, for everybody. But as as a performer, is it as different as it would feel like to us I mean, like, there's nothing that, like, there's something just, there's so undeniable about the scale of all of it. And it's a combination of, like, what I love more than anything to do with my time now, which is, like, anything related to music that I'm able to make, plus, like, my ch entire childhood into my adult life, like, the, you know, beating heart of, like, the, the music that I've leaned on when I've needed it the most, you know, plus, you know, Taylor now being such a dear friend and, you know, mentor in these ways and like the whole plus like learning from every single member of of her crew and band and dancers and so, like all of it is like everyone's so, so generous and so kind and so psyched to be there and it's it's like nothing else and it also they've created such a safe work environment like it's like it's like a real dream and I have been like so deeply grateful that there's a whole no another round of shows next year for so many reasons mostly because like I can't imagine it ever being over um ever and and also because it's kind of served as this uh sort of like a bit of a not the light at the end of the tunnel but like kind of this um just this marker of 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 everything till then I like I just know um what I want to do in order for the show that I'm able to to play ahead of hers next year I just want it to have a certain effect and I'm like really excited that really excited and really baffled that she's um sharing her stage yet again so that I can like run I mean, she's saying what we all know and that's you make fantastic music and I do mean that um Gracie thank you so much congratulations I mean that's on the nomination and for all that means and doesn't mean for you and for everyone else. <laughs> yeah, totally. Thank you so much. It's so good to see you. Thank you for your time and your questions and, and your beautiful wall. And thanks to my guest. Also, thanks to you for uh, for checking out the episode in the series. Before you get out of here, hit that subscribe button. Again, uh, you get three brand new interviews every single week. New and every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at uh, right here on YouTube or, of course, anywhere in podcast land, including iTunes, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Podchaser, NPR, or WFPK.org as well. A great way to keep up with your favorite artists and discover new ones as well. Then after that, actually head over to WFPK.org. That's where I do a show, Monday through Friday, 6 p.m. Eastern. It's an hour full of song premieres, music news, anniversary spins, bonus interviews, Monday through Friday, 6 p.m. Eastern at WFPK.org. Consequence has your music and film news. You can also find me on the social media spots, uh, Facebook, Instagram, mostly on Twitter. All three of them, the address is at Kyle Meredith. Do hope you like and follow along. That does it for another edition. I'm Kyle Meredith. I'll see you next time.